Carbon dioxide is 0.04 of a percent of the atmosphere. That is over the whole world. Human beings create only 3% of that 0.04% over the whole world. And Australia, human beings, manufactories, cows breaking wind, bushfires, are responsible for 1.3% of the 3% of the 0.04%. Is anyone seriously suggesting that we should stand the economy on its head force up energy prices, damage business, jeopardise employment because 0.04% of the atmosphere is carbon dioxide and coal produces carbon dioxide. Where is there a political leader who'll stand in the public place and say this is unadulterated rubbish and we are damaging our children? Forget the economy. Forget the fact that energy prices will go through the roof if we rely solely on renewable energy. I'm worried about our kids. They're being fed this garbage from kindergarten to primary school to secondary school to university in the media, in business, in politics. It's a disease and it seems to have us by the throat. Tenth of January 2024. This is one of that what a fuck moments. And this is going about this green madness that has taken hold of the world. Now you've listened to this video of that Australian guy. Maybe you should play it again so you understand what he's saying. The key is carbon dioxide is 0.04% of the atmosphere around the world. Think about that, 0.04%. That is extremely small. But look at what is happening. The media, politicians, billionaires, and then that green maniacs, Greta Thunberg and her squad, all of them are all over us about the green issues. And all of that stands on 0.04%. Now try and imagine for yourself a pyramid turned upside down and it stands on that little point on the earth and that base goes out you know how big those things are but it stands on the little tip and in this case that tip rests on 0.04% of the atmosphere now you don't need to be a rocket scientist to come to the conclusion that it is absolute madness to build an industry on that small percentage and imagine that upside down pyramid and in that pyramid you have electric vehicles, you have batteries, you have windmills, solar panels, all of those things together worldwide. Try and imagine the size of that industry. It is a monstrous industry, but it stands on a tip of 0.04%. The real scientists tells you if we can get that to 0.06%, the vegetation cover on the earth will increase by more than 60%. Think about that. Here in South Africa, we are being put through hell with a load shedding. I mean, if you look what happens in two days, I get this from my group, power group in the valley. This is what comes out on Tuesday. Look at that, no load shedding. Then about an hour later, we get this one. All of a sudden, load shedding is back. And here we are on Wednesday, and it is in full swing. Now, you have to understand that in South Africa, Eskom has abandoned a lot of coal generating units, a lot of them, more than two megawatt has been abandoned. What do you mean? What does abandoned mean? Abandoned means they just left them. Those things broke down and they left them. No repairs, fuck all. But they've got 7 billion rand to invest in battery banks 
to collect the solar and the wind shit. Seven billion rand. If that seven billion rand was spent on that abandoned coal fire stations, we would have, we would gain 24 hour power from those power stations. Whereas now, this seven billion is invested into a structure that will only supply on average 15% of its installed capacity. Think about that. So a 100 watt solar panel, rated 100 watt, over measured over a year, will only deliver 15 watt. Think about that. But we are allowing politicians to run the show instead of scientists. And we're going down exactly the same path as what happened with the pestilence. During the pestilence, journalists, politicians and millionaires were driving the whole thing. Not scientists, not doctors, no, no. Journalists, politicians and billionaires. Now, the politicians for a start, we know in South Africa, not the sharpest knives in the drawer. Actually, a lot of them are just plain dumb. That's what it is. And we can see how they are now panicking and they're all over the show with the MK party and all of that. It's all about intelligence. But if we look at this green farce, we, the people, are suffering under load shedding and at the same time, a lot of power, coal power stations has been abandoned by Eskom. Take note, abandoned. The thing, something broke, they shut it down, and they didn't repair it, they just left it. So, why are they doing it? They're doing it to create space on the grid for the propellers and the solar panels. And this company that now got the tender, to build those two huge battery banks for South Africa for 7 billion rand. One of the main peanuts in that company is Oberosa, the guy that left Eskom a few months ago. What does this tell you? Look at Motsepe, a major enterprise built on solar and wind. Ropes are being pulled to drive Eskom to this renewable shed. But we now see the renewables cannot supply in the demand. They cannot. Most important thing is re renewables are not reliable. But we the people must suffer. Why are we suffering? Because we allow politicians to rule us. Not represent us. They rule us. This is the bloody problem. And the people need to wake up. What they did to us with the pestilence. They're planning another one like that. But in the meantime, we are being abused and bullied with load shedding based on 0.04% of the atmosphere. Interestingly enough, you go to the big speciality farms where they grow everything in tunnels. And you look at those tunnels and next to the tunnel there's a machine that extracts CO2 from the atmosphere and pump it into the tunnel. And the scientist in charge of the project says, yes, they're pushing it up to 0.08% inside of that tunnels. Why are they doing it? Because they are immediately gaining about 30% on production. So 30% bigger crop. More important, with CO2 at 0.08, they get rid of more than 70% of the normal fungus that attacks the plants. Think about that and understand that they are planning shit for us. But we, the people, we are gullible. We are swallowing all this shit. During the pestilence, there was a small percentage that says, nothing of this, we don't want power. We're not going to be part of this party. And we were labeled anti this and all types of names. Today, the numbers that comes out is horrifying for those that took it. 
And the same thing is happening to us with the CO2. There's a small number of us that say, look again, look again, look again. But we are overwhelmed by journalists, politicians and billionaires. The fact of the matter is, South Africa cannot grow without our coal fire power station. That is our cheapest form of energy. And the reality is, Europe and America, they build their economies on coal fire power stations. Now their economies are strong and they've got other power, they've got nuclear and things like that. Now they want to tell us we cannot use coal because the alter and the alternatives are too expensive, we cannot afford it. So this is where we stand. Not only is that 7 billion rand going to be spent to build batteries, they want to spend another, I don't, can't remember the exact number, but it is also billions on expanding the grid. Why? Because these greenies went and put the solar on places where there's not enough grid capacity. Now us, the taxpayers, must pay for that grid expansion and that grid expansion will only be utilized 15% of the time over measured over a year. Think about that. I'm planning a talk again with Hugh Kreer and we will be specifically talking about the decentralization of power generation. But I thought I would give you this information today so that you can think about it because this CO2 scam has got severe consequences for all of us and a small group of people are making an obscene lot of money out of it. But think about that upside down pyramid standing on 0.04%. If that 0.04% story crash, you must understand that whole industry is coming down. And we can already see resistance to the electric cars. I read that in America they've got four months of course, in stock the manufacturers. The people are not buying the things. Those things have got no value second at. Then, and they don't tell you the enormous amount of money that you have to pay for the insurance of those things. And we see that there is not electricity to charge them all. So, think about these things. None of it makes sense. Please give me a like and a subscribe and share it in. Thank you for your support.